this is Panthera Arvin and welcome to a new video of mine. This is a new format that I wanted to try. This is a walkthrough video for Patreon uh, where I, I mm, sort of explain what I do and how I create my art. Except this time I wanted to narrate it because I've never tried it before and um, I wanted to check if maybe people were more receptive to this type of format instead of just me writing things down. I, I wanted to try this one and uh, I, wanted, I wanted you guys to let me know if this is more uh, of something you would prefer rather than me writing things down. I'm not, as you can tell, I'm not really good at speaking English and I don't know, maybe this is bothersome for you. So if you prefer me to write things down instead of just um, speaking, that's absolutely fine. Just let me know in the comments. But for this particular video, what I wanted to do was explain um, the use of layer masks that I use for creating these, this painting. This is Oki from Okami. This was requested by a kind patron called Red Wolf Dreaming, or simply known as Myth on Twitter. He's just an awesome, awesome person, super supportive, and I'm super grateful to have you here, Myth. Thank you so much. Basically, for this t type of painting, what I do is I create a line art as always and um, I create flat colors under the line art and I just, you can tell you can see me add it in the flat colors right here and the gist of this painting is that I was messing around with layer masks to create shading and highlights which I will explain how to use very shortly for now what I'm doing is I'm adding color to Oki here and um, uh, what I keep in mind here in this particular step is to make sure the values work. What I mean by values is the difference between light and dark color. So you can tell here that the blue I use for Oki's fur is quite dark. So what I do is I select a red color to contrast it to be visible against the blue. Um, sometimes you can see the screen just flash like in black and white. I don't know if you can tell, it's really really fast. That's me checking the values. That's basically me making sure the colors work together. So here's my first attempt at using a layer mask. As you can tell, a layer mask I clicked on that tiny little square at the bottom of the tab that has a little circle in it, right? And it created like a small canvas next to my group, you can tell right there. And basically a layer mask, what it does is it, it hides pixels. It doesn't delete them, it doesn't erase them. This is not an eraser you see me using. It's hiding pixels. So when I Basically, when I uh, deactivate the mask, as you can tell me doing really, really shortly here, it, look, it, I deactivate the mask and the pixels just snap right back where they were. And this is really, really helpful, as you can tell, for hiding particular parts of the painting or for creating light and shadow. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna create a um, photo filter layer a photo filter is basically similar to a multiply layer. Uh, as you can tell, it changes the color. It, it slightly blends the hue with the character. And uh, except it's a little more subtle than a multiply layer. You can tell I'm preserving the luminosity. You can tell it, it keeps the values as the ones you establish. But um, for this step, I will not preserve the luminosity. You can tell the the checker box is not checked and uh, I'm adjusting the color right here and what I'm gonna do, I'm, this is basically gonna be my shadow layer so as you can tell the color of Oki has gotten darker because I applied this filter to it, right? So the photo filter la layer has a small layer mask right next to it, you can tell that small rectangle, the white rectangle here so this is the layer mask. What I, how layer masks work is they work in black and white. You can only paint in shades of gray. And white, as you can tell, shows the pixel. And black, see me painting in black here, it hides them. 
So by painting in um, various shades of gray, white and black, we can basically just uh, create shapes of light and shadow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep the layer in total white so all the pixels show. And slowly, this is the light source, I'm going to select the black color and I'm going to paint light. And so what I'm doing is basically I'm hiding pixels from the photo filter layer which created um, a sort of a shadow layer on top of Oki. And you're probably like, well, why not use a multiply layer? You know, why go through all this trouble just to create a shadow layer? The reason is, uh, while multiply is simply a painted layer, and um, it's harder to edit once you lay it down. Uh, for example, say you have to select the same color again, uh, the same shadow color, uh, you will have to convert the layer from multiply back to normal, get the color picker and um, potentially even you know raise the opacity back up if, if you if you lowered it but for for this type of filter you all you do is basically you just hide pixels or show them and it's much much easier to edit um, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding a second photo filter this time I will preserve the luminosity you can tell the colors have gotten cooler, but the values stay the same. So there's always a shadow, a light, and the contrast between Oki's blue and red fur. But the colors got uh, slightly cooler, because I'm planning to make this um, a snowy background, so I, I needed the, col the colors to match the background. So this is, you can add basically as many as you want. I added just one for this particular painting, but you can have as many as you want. So for the next step, we're going to create bounce light. Basically the light reflected by the sky and the environment onto the character. In order to do this, I select a blue color, you can see me here creating a new layer, I select a blue color, and then um, we're going to s s move this layer from normal to soft light. In soft light, what it does, it's similar to overlay. You, see, you can tell like, it lightens the color, but it's softer. It's a softer effect. And next to the soft light layer, we're going to create another layer mask. And we're going to set it to black. So all the pixels are hidden, right? So in order to do this, what we do is we select the white onto the layer mask and we start painting. And you can tell it's very subtle because the colors are actually very similar. You can tell there's going to be some blue tint to Oki's muzzle right there where I'm painting. So what I'm doing right now is simply I'm adjusting the, the brightness of the blue in order to make it more visible. See how easy it is to edit. I didn't change the color. I didn't pick a different color. I simply uh, moved the hue and saturation of the layer of the blue soft light layer and I simply just changed the color. It's that easy. So um, right here I'm speeding up a little bit and um, I'm basically painting in all the soft light, all, all the reflected light. And we're going to create a new one. This time we're going to make highlights. And so I select a nice bright cool color. Um, I don't remember if I set it on a blue or a purple. And we're going to set this to overlay. So as I said before, overlay, uh, it brightens the colors and it's a strong effect. It's great for, for highlights. And so yeah, I changed to purple, I think, because I didn't like the blue. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to create a new layer mask for this layer. And then we're going to set it to black in order to hide all the pixels. And by selecting white, we're going to later bring those pixels back only in the areas we need. So look at this. We're going to create the mask, select black, paint it. And now all the pixels are hidden. Select white and paint it slowly back in, just where the lights, where the highlights are. See how easy it is. It's so easy and it's so much less time consuming to paint like this. I, I find it much, much easier than to have 
to just paint in the areas I need because this can be edited really fast. So we're not done yet. We're gonna create yet another one. This time for the deepest shadows, the occlusion shadows. And this one is gonna be a multiply layer. Because multiply, as I said before, is a strong effect. Uh, it, it darkens the colors a lot. So we're gonna select a nice dark blue gray. And we're gonna set to set it to multiply. Create the, the layer mask, as always. So, uh, set it to black. And then like white and only paint in the areas that receive no lights, no light at all. No light whatsoever, so the inside of the mouth, under the chin, uh, the shadow cast by the rope around his neck, uh, by his helmet, and the folds of his skin around the legs back there. So all these areas are gonna be in stark shadow, and we're gonna make them really, really dark. So see how easy all of this is. This is so easy. And, you know, what I would do normally is I would just paint without layer masks. But then in order to edit it, it will take me forever. So this really sped up the process. And not only that, it just gave me less strain on how to create these steps. Because it's very time consuming and it can be very bothersome to add all of these layers. And then, you know not knowing exactly what you want, especially if you want to experiment. For example, in this piece, I didn't exactly know where the light was until I just checked it out and I experimented with it. And if you have a destructive layer, aka just a simple layer without a layer mask, uh, you're less prone to editing it and then starting all over again. Whereas with this one, you can simply just um, go to the, to the layer mask and all, do all that it's there and all all the pixels are the all the information you have on your main layer are preserved so what i'm doing here is i'm going back you see i changed layer i went back to the soft light layer to add a little bit more detail that i didn't add before without changing colors without selecting colors simply by going to the layer mask and working in black and white it's so easy i i just cannot stress that enough and I actually saw this technique used in the development of the movie Klaus. I don't know if you've seen the movie with Santa Claus uh, that Netflix produced. And the art style in that movie is so beautiful. I love it. And they use a similar method to this. And it was so inspiring to just watch them create amazing artworks in minutes. I mean, not minutes, of course, it, it took them a while, but still, it was so fast and so easy because they just uh, could edit things so quickly. And it was really, really inspiring to just watch them use this method on a, such a large scale, on a movie scale. So what I'm doing right here is I'm simply creating a new layer on top of everything, on top of the line art as well, setting it to normal, and simply painting over it just adding all the details I want on the fur you can add, see me adding the breath and a little bit of the background as well I'm gonna add snow very shortly and uh, you can tell yeah it's whiskers so all the details go on top after all the lights and shadows have been established and this brings us to the end to this quick walkthrough slash tutorial and I hope I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. I found it very interesting to work on and I hope you know that it served the purpose. Let me know once again if you guys like this new format or if you prefer me just writing things down. Either one is fine for me. The spoken version can be um, perhaps a little bit more time consuming because I have to edit the audio as well. But whichever one you guys prefer, I'm bringing this to you guys to create a service as well as to be informative and inter entertaining. If this earns you more, you guys let me know and I'm gonna keep doing it. This was a tutorial sponsored by my supporters on Patreon and I create this kind of content every single month. So if you guys are interested in this and think it can be helpful to you, I would greatly appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon, because it's literally what's sustaining me right now, and I really, really, really couldn't be more grateful for your support. 
you guys are literally turning my my hobby into a job and it's wonderful it's something I will never take for granted thank you guys so much so yeah this is it and I hope you guys enjoyed it see you next time bye